Okay, welcome back. Let's meet in downward facing dog. So when you're ready, come into downward facing dog, lifting hips, tuck the toes under and press back. Take a few breaths here, maybe pedal out your dog, opening up the backs of the legs. Just start to feel a sense of grounding, a sense of connection on the earth between palms, between feet. And then just let everything relax around this structure that you're creating. So allow the head and neck to relax and soften. The navel hugs in gently towards spine, but not super tense in the belly. We're going to take three deep ujjayi breaths. So we're going to slow it down. Focus on staying connected to breath throughout the whole class. Almost like a meditation, staying mindful and aware. We can use the breath as a tool to keep us present, to keep the mind from wandering. I'm just gonna go through a, a vinyasa flow. So with your inhale, shift forward to plank pose. As you exhale, lower down chaturanga, or all the way to the earth. And then with your inhale, come into the back bend that your spine is ready for. So high cobra, up dog, or even low cobra with the belly on the ground. And with your exhale, let's meet downward facing dog. We're going to do another one of those, just slowing it down, really staying connected to breath, staying mindful and aware through each transition. So inhale, lifting heels, sit bones, round upper back, roll forward to plank pose, shoulders stack over wrists, extend out through crown of head, reach through heels, get long through the body. As you exhale, lower down chaturanga, shift forward, bend elbows 90 degrees. Inhale, come into your back bend, straightening the arms perhaps, lifting knees, stay soft in elbows, lifted in heart. And as you exhale, Press up and back, downward facing dog. Take a breath here. And then inhale, reach the right leg up and back, down dog split. As you exhale, step it through, right foot to right hand. Bring the right hand to the inside of that right foot and lower left knee down towards the ground. So we're gonna come into a lizard lunge. Want to try to keep the knees stacked over the ankle and then lower down elbows to the block or the earth. Let the head and neck relax here and keep right knee hugging in closely towards that right shoulder. And breathe. We're going to be here for a little while, so again, reconnect to breath. Notice the sensation of the air entering in through the nostrils, the coolness of the breath as it goes into the chest, fills the lungs. And notice the breath as it leaves the lungs, as the chest lets go, the lungs release the air and the warmth of the breath as it exits out of the body and the nostrils. Try to find a little bit more softening in, relaxation in the body. With your next inhale, bring the hands to the earth. Pivot the right toes out towards the right edge of the mat here. You're going to feel or see the inner arch of that foot lift off the ground, even the ball of that right foot extend. As you do that, the right knee and hip will open up. We don't want to feel any um, yanking in the knee, so just to show you the constitution, the inner arch is lifting and this right hip is opening out towards the right. 
And then we're going to come back down, bringing the hands underneath the shoulders. This time, a little bit of a different variation in that front leg. I'll show it to you from the side. So the right foot is lifted, the hip is opening, and then we're going to lower down, but keeping this hip opening in our lizard lunge. So just a different variation. So as you're ready to come into that, if it's bothering the knee at all, replant that foot down towards the ground. Then come back into the breath. Again, relax the head and neck as much as you can. If you have some a pillow or a block, place the forehead or head on that block or pillow to help the head relax. With your next inhale, bring the hands to the earth. Plant the right foot down and start to walk the foot over towards the left edge of the mat, down towards that left knee. And then with your um, next breath, lower onto that right hip. So we're going to come into pigeon. We have a nice deep angle with that front shin. The right hip is on the earth and the thigh on the right side is parallel to the long edge of the mat. Back leg is straight out behind you. If your hips are tighter and that's too much, you can always bend the knee and bring the inside of that back leg to the earth. Otherwise, try to pivot onto the top of the foot so that the knee is placed onto the ground. Square off in chest and shoulders. You'll feel a nice opening through the whole left side of the body, chest and torso. And then as you exhale from here, we're going to lower down forearms to the earth. Take your time here. Just like in lizard lunge, we're going to be here for just a little bit longer. So reconnect to breath. Try to find some ease in the body. And as your body is telling you uh, that it's ready to go deeper, you're welcome to slowly start to walk the hands out, bring the head to the uh, palms stacked on top of each other. Over some time, if you feel ready, you can even bring the forehead all the way to the earth keeping the hands extended out. Just let your belly be soft and full of breath. From here with an inhale, walk the hands up underneath the shoulders. We're going to do a twist here. So we're going to bring the left elbow to the earth on the outside of that left, on the outside of the knee that's on the ground. So it's actually our right leg. Just hook it onto the out, outer thigh and then bring the palms together. You may need to activate the feet here so that you can stay up rather than kind of falling over towards the left. Lengthen the spine on the inhale. And as you exhale, hug the navel in, gently press the palms together for this twist. If this is too much, you can also bring that left elbow towards the earth to deepen. Left elbow all the way over towards the left side as you fold a little bit deeper into the twist. And then with your exhale, just release back down facing forward, bringing the head to the ground, the arms extended out. So just release that twist. From here on the inhale, walk the hands up underneath the shoulders. Lengthen up through the chest, sit down onto that right hip, and then just lift the arms up overhead. Again, you may need to bend that back leg Bringing the inner, um, inner knee towards the earth, inner thigh towards the earth. 
We're just going to take a side stretch here. So hug the navel in towards the spine. Lift up like you're taking a reverse warrior. Lifting the right ribs long. The right side of the torso up towards the sky. And then release with your exhale, plant the palms. We're going to curl onto the back left foot and lift up and back, downward facing dog. Take a moment just to wiggle out the legs, to release that opening. And then with your inhale, shift forward to plank pose. Exhale, lower down, chaturanga, or all the way to the earth. Inhale, coming up into your back bend. And with your exhale, we'll meet downward facing dog. We're going to take the other side. So with your inhale, lift the left leg high. As you exhale, step through left foot to left hand. Left hand to the inside of that left foot. And then lower right knee towards the ground. Again, we're going to start with the left knee hugged in close towards that left shoulder. Take a big breath. Feel the spine grow longer. And then as you exhale, lower forearms to the block, earth, or even a pillow. Relax the head as much as possible, then breathe. So this is kind of a squared hip variation of the pose. My inner thighs are hugging in, my left knee hugging in towards left shoulder. Keep breathing. Keep present to sensation. See if you can let go any more in any part of the body, if you're gripping or holding. And just try to let the breath irrigate the body, release any tension, any strain that you may be holding on to. This is a longer hold, so try to stay with it, try to stay present. But also it's important to note what feelings, what thoughts, what reactions come up as you are in different poses. Few more breaths here. And then with your next inhale, bring the hands to the earth. Pivot the left toes out towards the left corner of the mat. Lift the arch on that foot and you'll start to see and feel this left hip opening out towards the left as well. We're going to keep the toes super active just to protect the knee joint here, but then re-square off Reach the chest forward towards the front of the mat, and then as you exhale, come back down onto the block, forearms, or whatever depth you were in on the other side. Now we're gonna feel this opening happen in the hip, in the left hip, in a different place than we did with the foot on the ground. So just notice the difference that you feel. And then again, return to breath, let go where you can let go. If this bothers the knee at all, just place this left foot on the earth and come back into the variation that we took earlier. We don't want to feel any pain or strain on the knee joint. With your next inhale, come on up, plant the palms underneath the shoulders, bring the left hand to the outside of the left foot, and then just start walking, heel toeing that left foot over towards the right edge of the mat and down towards the right knee. 
Sit down onto left hip, left thigh is parallel to the long edge of the mat. And again, try to straighten that right leg out behind you. We're going to take a moment just to square off the hips and chest, feeling that opening through the right side of the body now. Try to keep this length in the spine, the squaring off of the hips as you fold with your exhale, bringing forearms to the earth. Take your time to get into the depth. So give this side of the pose, the side of your body, the same opportunity to open as you did on the other side. So no need to rush it, even though we have an idea of where we're going because we did it on the other side. But just let your breath guide you. Let your body tell you when it's ready to go deeper. And be mindful that sometimes um, our hips are not even. One may feel a little bit more open than the other, and that's totally normal. It happens. So as we go into these different hip openers, it's important to treat each side on its own. If you go into the depth of the pose, that you did on the other side, but it just doesn't feel right on this side, or it's too much, then just ease off of it. There's no need to force yourself into it. We don't want to pull any muscles or injure ourselves. So just really tune in, listen into what's going on. With your next inhale, bring the hands up underneath the shoulders. We're going to come into that twist, so hook the right elbow over that left knee. Bring the palms together, try to lengthen the spine on the inhale, and as you exhale, just hug navel in towards spine for the twist. Try to keep this left sit bone grounded. You can always release the right elbow towards the earth, if that helps. Or to deepen, slide that elbow as far over towards the edge of the mat as you can. You'll come into a little bit of a deeper fold. And then palms together for the twist. If this is ever too much, you can ease off of it. Just take another breath or two if it feels good. And then with your exhale, just release back down. Forehead to the earth, to the hands or elbows to the earth. And take a breath. With your next inhale, come back up, hands underneath the shoulders. We're going to sit onto the left hip, maybe bend your back leg a few inches so that you really feel grounded and stable here, and then just hold opposite elbows up overhead, and take a gentle side opener here, feeling the left ribs, the left side of the torso extend. We're not really yanking ourselves back, just getting an opening through the left side of the body. And then release, bring the hands to the earth. Curl off of your back knee behind you and step the left foot to downward facing dog. Take a few moments just to wiggle out the legs, roll, lift a leg, shake out the hips. Just try to find release where you can. And then with your next inhale, shift forward to plank pose. Exhale, lower down, chaturanga. So these are a little bit slower than normal. We're taking our time with these vinyasas. Inhale into your back bend. And exhale, downward facing dog. So take a big breath in here. And a big breath out. Walk the hands back towards the feet to fold at the back of the mat. 
Grab opposite elbows, bend the knees gently, let the belly just fall down towards the thighs. The head relaxes towards the earth. You can gently shake out the head, neck, or sway side to side. Just try to find ease and release here. Three more breaths. Make them steady and long and deep. And then from here, bring the hands to the earth. Flop the feet out a little bit wider uh, than hips width apart and angle the toes away from each other, heels in. Start to lower down into a squat. If the heels lift, that's cool. If you can keep them planted, that's cool too. And then just try to lengthen up through the spine, bring the palms together at the heart and the elbows to the inner thighs. So we're getting the spine as long as possible, just feeling some opening in the hips in the inner thighs, inner legs. And then from here, release the right arm to the earth. You're gonna kind of hook the right upper arm to the inner right thigh. And then with your inhale, lift the left arm up towards the sky. And then come back up to center, inhale. And exhale, bring the left hand down to the earth, hook the outer edge of that left upper arm to the inner left knee, and then reach the right arm up. And breathe, feel the chest open and expansive. And then with your inhale, come back up. As you exhale, bring the hands behind you, sit down and straighten the legs out in front of you. Feel the sitting bones planting onto the earth underneath you. If you need a little bit of a boost or if you have tight hamstrings, roll over the edge of the mat or give, grab a blanket or a towel to sit up on. When you do sit onto a towel for folds or to sit on a boost for the folds, you want to sit on the very edge. So almost like your sitting bones were kind of dragging off the edge of the bolster. My mat's not very thick, so it doesn't make that big of a difference. Um, but if you have a thicker mat or, again, a towel, that will help give you a little prop up. So what we're going for in the folds is to have the pelvis tilting forward rather than tilting back. So if I try to enter a fold with my pelvis tilting backwards, I'm going to be hunching, hunching, hinge hunching at the back, sorry, brain fart. So we wanna be nice and lifted. Start with the hands by your sides, lengthen through the crown of the head, activate the feet here. So you're reaching through the bottoms of the feet. And then you're gonna feel the pelvis start to tilt forward as you lift the arms up overhead. So it's kind of like the difference between cat uh, and cow pose. So cow pose, the pelvis is tilting forward, chest lifting, cat tilt is rounding the upper back and you'll feel the pelvis kind of angle backwards. So with your next inhale, lift the arms up overhead, tilt the pelvis forward and start to fold over the legs, bringing the hands to the earth before you start rounding or hunching the back. So on a nice long spine, almost as if you were lengthening the front of the torso as well, with the inhale lengthen, and as you exhale, fold. Keeping the hands on the earth, the legs or the feet when you're in a nice depth. And again, trying to let those shoulders relax and release. We're just gonna take a few breaths here. You're welcome to bring uh, to just relax the arms onto the legs, relax the head and the neck. The knees can bend slightly. You can even bring your elbows to the legs and support your head, your head with your hands. Just try to get comfy here, as comfortable as possible. Maybe not very comfy, 
in this fold for about five more breaths. You may need to experiment a little bit to find the placement of the arms and the head that works for you. But then once you find it, just try to find stillness and return to breath. With your next inhale, come off the fold. And then from here, we're going to spread the legs wide. So we're going to take a wide fold. You're welcome to adjust orientation on the mat so that your heels are still on the ground, or just uh, you can continue to face forward, whatever works for you. We want to make sure the kneecaps and the toes are pointing up towards the sky rather than angling in or really opening out wide. So you may need to adjust the distance of the legs the separation of the legs to get that alignment. Then again, start with the hands behind you. Really feel the pelvis tilting forward, the heart extending up and forward. And then as you exhale, just start to walk the hands down in front of you, maybe placing the forearms onto the earth or a block, or just walking the hands out. Tuck the chin towards chest. Again, try not to yank or round. If I really try to force myself down, I could get closer to the earth, but the importance is to get the opening in the legs. <clears throat> so just pick a place where you feel the opening happen, but that you can still breathe and relax and ease into. We're gonna be here for a little while. If you need to, you can bend the knees or readjust um, the distance of the legs. Just make sure you're not feeling any pressure or pulling in the knee joints. And then relax, breathe. And just like in our other poses, if your body's telling you to go a little bit deeper, you're welcome to go a little bit deeper. Just follow that edge, that edge of opening in the body. Try to relax around the structure of the pose. Your next inhale, come on up, walk the hands back behind you, bend the right leg, plant the foot onto the inner left thigh. With an inhale, extend the arms up overhead. As you exhale, bring the left hand to the left leg, reach that right arm all the way up and over, get in a nice side stretch. Keep extending through that left leg, keeping the left foot active. And as you side bend, we want to feel this opening through the whole torso. So from left hip to right shoulder, spiraling the heart, the chest open towards the sky, letting the head and neck relax. You can gaze down if that helps release a bit more and find your breath. With your next inhale, lift up and out with that right arm, and then change sides. So extend the right leg out, bend the left knee. Inhale, reach arms high. And with your exhale, bring the right hand towards the right leg. Left arm reaches up and open, side bending towards the right, getting a stretch and opening through the left side of the torso. Want to keep the palm on that lifted hand face down towards the earth so this left shoulder is drawn down away from here as well.
keep right foot active. Maybe even close the eyes and breathe here. Feel that spiraling open through the torso, through the chest. Relax the head and neck and just take a few more breaths. Then with your inhale, lift up and out. And as you exhale, bring the hands behind you again. We're going to take a body kanasana. So the feet are going to, the knees are going to be wide, feet are going to be touching together. We're going to take a wider body kanasana than you would normally do. So maybe a half a meter between heels and, and, and pelvis. And this is going to be so that we can fold into it. So if you're used to taking a really close body kanasana, it will be wider than normal. Start with the hands behind. Again, feel the pelvis tilt forward, the chest lift forward and open. And then as you exhale, just start to bring the hands to the feet and bend the elbows folding. If you have a block or a blanket, you can place the head on, a, on the block or the blanket. Just try to get comfortable here. If not, that's totally okay. Just tuck chin towards chest, relax head and neck. And breathe. So there's no yanking or pulling from shoulders. There's no forcing yourself down into the pose. We're just taking it to a depth that you can hold, sustain for a while and breathe into. And as your body is ready to go deeper, as it tells you to go a little bit deeper, you're welcome to extend the arms out a little bit, maybe bend the elbows towards the earth. You can even experiment with going deeper and then ease off if it's too much. The most important is that you're breathing, that the mind is present to what's going on in the body, what's going on in the heart. If the mind starts jumping around or getting distracted, just note what is pulling you out of center. What, is, what are the thoughts that get you, <laughs> that pull you out of the present? And just acknowledge those thoughts, acknowledge those feelings or sensations that pull you out. Acknowledge them, honor them, and then just let them go and come back to the body. Come back to the breath. You can always come back to those thoughts at a later time, a more appropriate time, but for right now, this is space that you're creating for yourself space that you're creating for your mindfulness practice, for awareness of self. And that's so important. Sometimes it's more important than we let on. So give yourself this time, give yourself this silence, this space, this moment of stillness. And then with your inhale, just slowly start to make your way off of the fold. Bring the hands behind you and just extend the legs out. Wiggle off the toes. Point and flex the feet to release the ankles. Okay. And then from here, just bend the legs. Scoop yourself forward and make your way onto your back. Hug the knees in towards chest once you're on your back. And gently rock side to side, massaging out the low spine, the sacrum. And then plant the feet to the ground. From here, extend the right leg up towards the sky. Interlace the hand behind the right thigh. 
or calf if you have a little bit more openness in the backs of the legs. And then from here, draw that left leg all the way down onto the earth so both legs are straight. <clears throat> try to soften the shoulders down towards the mat rather than really trying to hunch up. Relax head onto ground as well. And then give a little bit of pressure of the hands into the leg and press that thigh back into the hands. So we're creating this connective energy between hands and thigh. Reaching high with the heel on the right leg and pressing down with the hip on the right side, the right hip. From here, we're going to bring the left piece fingers to the right big toe. If that's um, too um, far to hold with the leg straight, just bend the knee. Place the right hand on the earth. Take a big breath in, and as you exhale, gently start to lower that leg towards the left side. It can come all the way onto the earth. Again, if you need to bend that leg to help, Otherwise, keep it straight, gaze over right shoulder, extend that right arm out, keep both legs active, so even that uh, left leg that's long down on the mat. And then just try to find some relaxation, some ease in this. And then with your inhale, bend that right leg, roll back onto the spine, and release the feet to the mat. So we're going to bend both legs, changing sides. This time, extend the left leg up, interlace the hands behind that left thigh, and then extend right leg down onto the ground. Again, we're going to create a little bit of connective energy, so press the hands into the left thigh. Press that left thigh into the hands. And then feel that extension through left heel and press down through the left hip. So we're trying to extend as long north and south, up and down as you can, and try to create that energy of hands into leg. So this is going to help open the back of the left leg, but it's also going to help um, release some of the muscles in the back of the left hip by giving some downward pressure of that left thigh bone into the hip socket. Let the shoulders soften as much as you can. Neck is relaxed. And breathe. From here, bring the right piece fingers to left big toe. If you need to, bend this left leg. Plant left hand onto the earth. Take a big breath in. And then as you exhale, we're going to start to lower that leg over towards the right side. And over towards the ground. Gaze over left shoulder. Again, you can bend this uh, left knee as you need to to get comfortable. Close the eyes and breathe. Feel the belly and chest rise and fall with the breath. Feel your body lying on the ground, supported, steady. Good. 
And with your inhale, bend the left leg, roll back onto the spine, unhook the legs, center yourself out, and then bring the feet and knees hips width apart, heels close enough to lightly be able to touch with your fingertips. Bring the navel towards the spine. You're going to feel the pelvis start to lift just a little bit, the tailbone lift as you do so. And then press palms into the earth, roll up into a bridge pose, puffing the chest up towards chin and actively pressing through the feet. Maybe you walk one shoulder underneath you and then the other interlacing the hands behind the back. Keep the chin tucked towards the center of chest and breathe. From here, unhook the shoulders and hands, reach the arms up overhead, and as you exhale, roll down the back one vertebrae at a time. Once the hips are down, bring the feet wide, knees together, and just relax the arms overhead on the ground. Just an easy counter pose. And then as you're ready, start to make your way into Shavasana. So we're going to extend the legs out, bring the arms by the sides, palms face up. Take a few moments to wiggle, to release any areas of the body, body that you need to release. Adjust hair, clothing. <clears throat> and then once you've found your place, take a big breath in through the nose. And an open mouth, exhale out. Let everything go, let everything soften. Surrender to the earth. There's nothing that you need to do or take care of right now. This is your time. So really take it, really be present for it. You're welcome to spend a little bit longer here on Shavasana if you have the time. Otherwise, if you're ready to come out, just start to bring some gentle movement into the body. Maybe just starting with fingers and toes. And then as you're ready, make your way to one side and then up into a seated position. Take a moment just to honor your practice on your body and reflect on how you're feeling. Take one last moment to send a wave of gratitude to yourself for taking this time out of your day for your practice. It's some of the most important work that we can do. So thank you for joining me. The light in me bows to the light in you. Namaste. Thank you.